Today for our daily cancellation, we have a man named James Causey who writes for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and he uh, has just written a column apparently so poignant and powerful that it was reprinted by USA Today and Yahoo News. His article contains a startling revelation. You aren't going to believe this, but James Causey is a black journalist who says that he has been the victim of racism. I know it's shocking to hear a journalist claim that he's been the victim of racism. It's been at least 27 minutes since the last time a journalist whined about racism, so this is this is not something that happens very often at all. Uh, Causey's diatribe has this title, I'm worn from years of racial slurs, but I'll no longer be silent about bigotry. Now, in the article, Causey paints a bleak picture. Despite being an obscure columnist writing for a regional newspaper, he apparently gets tons of hate mail. He is a lightning rod for controversy. And he, and he complains, uh, much of the hate mail is racist. So going back 15 years to when he first started his column, he recounts this story. Quote, as you might imagine, readers reacted to my writing. We get emails and sometimes phone calls, but it was still a time when we'd regularly get letters in the mail, usually handwritten, sometimes typed out. Most were positive. A few were uncomplimentary, but one stood out after I wrote a piece critical of Milwaukee Public Schools' poor reading scores and the lack of urgency to change it. It was the first time I'd open a letter to see myself called the N-word. It wasn't the first time being called that in my life, of course, but there was something about it, something, something that word Seeing that word written down and used so readily in, in others that followed, black parents were lazy N-words, and I was called an enabling N-word for not calling out the lazy N-words. It cut me like a knife. Fifteen years later, it still angers me. After years of staying silent about the pain that it caused, and from the other slurs that fall to this day, I came to a realization. This behavior cannot and should not be tolerated. So a decade and a half later, and this grown man claims to be actively in pain, traumatized from one alleged letter with some bad words 15 years ago. Now, I have to assert the word, insert the word alleged here because there's no reason to take him at his word on any of this. And there's plenty of common sense reasons to doubt much of it. He continues claiming that this one racist letter was only the tip of the iceberg. And soon he was buried under an avalanche of racist hatred, all being uh, targeted for some reason at some guy who writes a column that nobody reads for a newspaper nobody reads. Quote, I put the letter in my desk drawer and didn't tell anyone about it for weeks. A similar letter followed and another and a hundred others, all littered with the same inflammatory language African Americans have been called for hundreds of years. Sometimes they were mailed to my house, which freaked me out and scared my wife. He then gives some examples of the things that people have allegedly said to him. Reading those examples verbatim, quote, when did the paper start hiring racial slur that starts with C? If you hate it here so much, why don't you return to Africa and swing from a tree? I'll pay for your one-way ticket. The only thing worse than an N-word is another N-word. In my years as a columnist, not much changed, he continues. Just the means of delivery. Sometimes the hatred comes in via voicemail, but usually it's email. Now, if these all sound like kind of a, the, the sort of like the generic racist statements that people committing race hoaxes always make up, well then draw whatever conclusions you like. Um, I can't say with certainty that he's making it up, only that it sounds made up. And then there's this strange anecdote. A few months ago, I received an old school mailed letter with a cutout copy of my column on the annual daddy daughter dance. I talked about the great times I had with my daughter at this event until she aged out. The sender, presumably a subscriber since it was a paper copy, crossed out the word black, replacing it with the N-word repeatedly. Okay, so he's claiming that some racist attacked him after he wrote a column recounting his experience at a daddy-daughter dance. And he says that this person uh, took the time to cross out the word black wherever it appeared in the column and replace it with the N-word. Well, here's the curious thing. I read the column, which he links to, the daddy-daughter column. The word black does not appear at all in the column. So he says that the unknown racist crossed out the word black and replaced it with the N-word, except that the word black is absent from the article. So there's a slight logistical problem here, but we're not going to linger on it. He goes on, ask any black journalist if they have a similar story. I'll bet the answer is yes. We don't discuss it, but it's time to change that. If anything, the hatred has become more overt. Remember the Milwaukee TV reporter called the N-word at Country Thunder last summer? It's become more persistent. And thanks to social media, easier, easier to spew from the shadows. Now, I actually do remember that story about the Milwaukee TV reporter. Uh, Taylor Lumpkin was her name, and she went to cover some kind of country music festival. And later that night, she tweeted this, quote, 
Went to cover this event tonight for a news story. Left humiliated after a guy ran up and yelled at me unprovoked and called me an N-word twice. No one helped. Everybody stared at me and laughed. Do better, people. Now, the odd thing is that Lumpkin was there as a TV reporter with a TV crew, and yet nobody caught this racist attack on camera. There is no video. There are no photos. And this happened twice. So this person came up and ran and said this. Nobody turned the camera on. And then he came again, and no one turned the camera on. Amazing. As far as I could tell, no witnesses ever came forward. So Lumpkin made this claim, never said another word about it publicly. There was no follow-up. And then, as Causey recounts later in this column, she quit her job and left the industry to focus on her, quote, mental health. It's all very strange indeed. And by very strange, I mean that it obviously sounds completely made up. Reading on a bit more, quote, I've long kept the scale of the racist hatred I received to myself, often not telling my editors about it. But I've come to realize how corrosive that is. Picture an old house weathered by decades of rain, snow, hail, and other harsh elements. You don't notice the changes month to month or even year to year. But when you look at an old photo, you realize how worn it has become. It's like that for me. I have become weathered and worn. I am tired. Now, this article goes on like this and on and on and on. It is one extremely lengthy and tedious Jeremiah about all the persecution he's faced as a black newspaper columnist in America in the 21st century. And the theme that he re- returns to again and again is that he is tired. He's exhausted. He's worn down. He's like a man returning home from the trenches in World War I, shell-shocked, traumatized. You cannot imagine the things he's seen, what he's been through, the emails that he's read. Oh, the emails. So many emails. You know, in a world filled with uncertainties, you need to be prepared for any possibility. You need My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply is your trusted partner for emergency preparedness, whether it's a natural disaster, a sudden emergency, or unforeseen circumstances. My Patriot Supply's high quality food storage, storage solutions ensure that you and your loved ones are always well-fed no matter what comes your way. Right now, when you go to preparewithwalsh.com, you can save $200 off their best-selling three-month emergency food kit. This kit is even customizable with options like their ultimate breakfast kit, a mega protein kit with real meat, and even a gluten-free kit. Your three-month emergency food supply provides over 2,000 calories each day for optimal strength and energy in stressful situations. Don't wait for disaster to strike before taking action. Invest in your safety and well-being by securing your food storage today. Go to preparewithwalsh.com to get $200 off your three-month food supply today. That's preparewithwalsh.com. Now, we're not going to harp on the fact that so much of the racism he recounts sounds totally fabricated. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's probably the most salient point about all of this. But we'll move past it in order to make one other point. And the point is this. As someone who, myself, who certainly gets an order of magnitude more negative feedback than this guy, I can say that the cliche is true. Words only have the power that you give them. And people like James Causey have given a word like the N-word an enormous amount of power. Not just James Causey. Our whole society has turned this word into something, something more than a word. It is like some kind of witch's curse. It's a magical spell. It is a collection of syllables so unspeakably awful that they cannot be uttered in any context, unless they're being uttered by black people, in which case the word could be said 500 times in every sentence, and it's totally fine. So the word is either utterly banal and totally meaningless, or a mystical incantation that holds evil, sorcerer-like powers, which is all completely incoherent, of course. But putting aside the inconsistency in, uh, in, in this, uh, in the way that the word is viewed and used, the power it has been given is, is also absolutely arbitrary and contrived. So James Causey says that he read the word once in a, in a piece of hate mail 15 years ago, and it still haunts him to this day. Like, I could not recite verbatim hate mail I received 15 minutes ago. There's too much of it, and it's all far too meaningless to me. Now, every once in a while, I get something that's unusually vile and disgusting, even by current standards, and sometimes I get threats that you know have to be reported to law enforcement. But there is a, certainly, you know, there's there's no word or insult that I could ever read or hear from a critic that would haunt my dreams for years. And that's because I don't give my critics that kind of power. Guys like Causey are the ones who 
have given power to these racial slurs, but only certain racial slurs, of course. Now, I don't really believe that Kazi has been lying awake at night in tears over bad words that people have said to him, but that's the picture he's painting. And all it does is give much greater weight and impact to the very word that he claims to despise. So if you really want people to stop using the N-word, and you claim that people are using it all the time, the best thing you could do is ignore it. Stop talking about it. Stop panicking over it. Certainly don't write a 15,000-word lamentation about the pain that the word causes you. When you do that, it advertises to your critics that they can easily make you crumple into a little ball and sob uncontrollably like a child just by uttering one simple two-syllable word in your presence. So it's like if the Wicked Witch of the West said to Dorothy, no, please don't grab that bucket of water over there and dump it on me. Of all the things you could do, definitely don't do that one thing. Don't do that. Why are you doing it? I told you not to. In fact, come to think of it, that's what you say if you want someone to do the thing you say you don't want them to do. So it's almost as if the James Causeys of the world give so much publicity and power to the N-word because they want people to say it. He wants to get the emails. He wants to keep the victimhood train going. It's almost as if this is the most obvious reverse psychology tactic imaginable. Almost as if, or exactly as if. I think we've just discovered why the left makes such a big deal out of that word. And we've also discovered why James Causey is today, very certainly, canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.